This is Linda Scalinda, and Linda is an amazing painter. She is able to put on canvas uh, her complete imagination. It's like it's open for interpretation. And this wonderful color field that you've created is a, is a field of flowers. And is this, uh, does it have any physical representation? Is it purely imagination? Well, I like it to be um, what your imagination is or what you can figure out. Like, um, some people will come in and say, oh, I love your foxgloves. Or other people will be um, delphinians. Or, you know, they have their own interpretation, which I really like to do. Um, so you're not drawing from an actual plant, but you're really, uh, it's the inspiration of, of what a garden has uh, yeah. given you, like the, yeah. the joy of, of uh, the floral kingdom. Absolutely. It's, um, it's just, you, we have so many gardens here in Victoria, and um, it's, just, it's just the expression of, uh, of that, really, just uh, wandering around and seeing the beautiful gardens and, and it's, my neighborhood. It's, it's more than that. Because it also has to do with with how paint is applied to canvas, and it has to do with with light and and how the eye moves through the field. So you've created this colorful field, and and you start seeing re repetitions. Like there's there's these small floral um, buds that that repeat, and and the the layering of of the different tones, the way that you've taken different. Uh, you, you, you have a wonderful palette, and and then you've um, you've got darker and lighter tones, and so you're leading the eye through it in, in a very imaginative way. And every square inch of the canvas is occupied. There's no waste space. There's no lost space within this canvas. Well, I want it to be filled up with uh, with the joy of the blossoms, really. And I also understand, Linda, that you're the artist in residence at the Empress Hotel right now. Um, and can you tell us how long you're going to be at the Empress and what that gig is about? Um, well, it's the Artist in Residence program at the Empress Hotel. It's a six months um, residency. Um, it's my turn now. I started here in November, or there in November. I'm there till um, end of April. Um, I'm there full time working. It's an amazing venue. It's a world stage. I meet people from all over the world. I get to paint there and just enjoy the beautiful Empress Hotel. So you've created your studio and transplanted to the Empress and yes. you have a gallery and studio within yes. that space. Yes. Well, what a yes. wonderful opportunity for you. It is. That's, that's yes. very exciting. It is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Linda. Okay, thank you very much. This is Kenna Baradell, and uh, <laughs> you've done some amazing still lifes, and they're Thank so you. different. You know, they have a really interesting, um, almost like a warp dimension. A warp? A warp dimensionality to them. You know, to me, they, they're, they're kind of like, uh, they remind me of Van Gogh. You know, they take me into another dimension. I oh. love the way that the, uh, in this one, for instance, like that there's, there's things on skew lines, and so it's not trying to be rigid and, and formal. So there's a there's a real um, movement through them. Can you tell me like how you um, compose and how you create these compositions? Well, this uh, this actually was a, a challenge put out by somebody in my book club. <laughs> Sounds funny, but she had a niece who was getting her house decorated and she wanted something in purple and orange with a tea theme for the kitchen. And after she left, she, and my friend is an artist and she had been asked to do one, and after she left I thought, well, I can do that. I think this sounds like fun. So this is actually my kitchen counter and this is a wall. It's a very narrow wall that is actually a support thing and I set still lifes up here often and there's another one in the show in the same place. So I set that up and just so it started, it's, it's not the way it looked, it's all the way it felt, so. Well, in the upper um, painting, you know, you, you work through a, a really interesting palette, you know, like these tones of blues and, and then the, the counterbalance with the oranges I think is really intriguing. I love the fact that there's paintings on the wall. So you have paintings within a painting. It's a story actually. Can you tell us the story? Yeah. Um, this painting was going to have a person in it. 
and the painting I did of her uh, was too. I do a lot of very stylized. I've seen some. Of yeah, very stylized they're portraits. They're really wonderful. And she went. Oh, I don't think I could put that up in my house. And I had done it with her favorite pictures of mine in the background because she can't have them unless she buys them. <laughs> So I put them in the background so she could have those pictures. And then she she wasn't happy with it not being a likeness, and so I changed it and made it what you see now. And it's more of a Victorian drawing room theme. And well, it's interesting so. that you're starting from a point of realism, but then your own imagination is taking over, and you're really um, discovering something within that space right. and not sticking to a rigid plan or idea. Yeah, no plan. Not nothing is ever supposed to look exactly like it is. It's just let's play with it and have fun. Well, thank you, Kenna. Thank That's you. wonderful. Thanks a lot. <laughs> this is Jennifer Zisman, and she does some amazing paintings. And Jennifer, one of the things that really strikes me about your work is the incredible light and textures that you're creating. Can you tell us a little bit about how your, um, what your techniques are to, to create such texture in your work? Well, I do a lot of layering, and I work quite spontaneously when I paint. So. I have a bit of an idea of where I'm going with my painting when I start, but I really let it unfold as I as I work on it, and I let the painting inform me as to what it kind of needs, and I try to work with it to create a little bit of um, a little bit of intrigue and mystery to um, bring out a sense that there's sort of a, a deeper presence to these uh, this particular series, the Birch Forest series. Well, you've created a, a wonderful layering and, and sense of depth to the work. Um, are these inspired um, directly from nature? Are these like realistic or are these um, inspired from your imagination and memory? Really um, a layering of those, a combination of places I've been that have had a tremendous impact on me and um, just my sense of sort of uh, excitement for life and nature, I kind of pull it all in. So I tend to go to places that I'm very inspired by and take photographs. And sometimes I'll work outside, but usually I end up working from the photograph and bringing it back to my studio and kind of uh, working with a lot of different um, layers of, of inspiration, I suppose. Uh, one of the things I notice is is I love the the tones that you're creating in the shadow areas, like this this strip of magenta and these beautiful blue tones in the deep shadows, and um, and uh, it's such a nice counterpoint to the to the brilliance of the light beyond. Thank you. Well, I I often try to start out the painting quite um, subtle, and I try not to overdo it with the color. But I always know when the painting needs little bursts of color here and there. So I sort of again work intuitively with um, as it unfolds to get a sense of where it needs a bit more impact and uh, where those those particular colors will really shimmer together when they're placed side by side. So I like to play with that. Well, they certainly do shimmer. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Jennifer. Thank you, John. Hi, this is Susan McGilvery, and I wanted to talk a little bit about her paintings. There's um, an amazing um, scenes that you've created here, and it's so interesting because um, in our small works show, uh, Susan brought in um, Cafe Life number one and two, and they immediately sold, and then she brought in three and four, and they sold, and then it was five, six, and seven, and now I noticed they were up to eight and nine. And do you spend a lot of time in cafes, or what, how do you create these images? Well, my daughter who lived in France for quite a while, and I used to go and visit her, and of course I have lots of photographs and things like that, and I lived in Montreal for a time, so I took a lot of photographs, and so I have a lot of, a lot of images. Images I can work from, and I use my imagination, and sometimes put them together in different ways. And well, I think you like really capture a, a sense of um, style and space and light and mood in your paintings, oh, and it, that obviously translates very well to the public because people have really responded well to this idea. And um, I, I love you know, the way that you capture a sense of, of the tone, the mood of, a, of an image, but also there's a sense of place, there's, there's a sense of movement within it as well. Yeah, well, 
it didn't come that easily on some of them. It, it took me a while to get the figure to feel as if it was relaxing in the space. And uh, sometimes they go through a few contortions before they get to that. Well, it's interesting so. that you can draw from your own life yeah. um, to create these images. Like you've really kind of taken experiences that you've had and, and been able to put them on canvas. Oh, and you. I think that's a wonderful trait. Well, I enjoy doing them. They're really fun to do. Right. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Susan. Thank you. I'm with Charlene Stushnov, and we're looking at her amazing still life paintings. Um, this one of the water lilies. Um, can you tell me the inspiration behind this painting? Well, I walk a lot at Cedar Hill, and they've got a beautiful lily uh, pond there. And in the springtime, it's full of flowers, and uh, I just find it really attractive. I like the colors of the leaves and the light when it's shining on them. I like to pick up the light on the leaves. What I also notice about the leaf, and I love when the artists do this, is that it has bites out of it. Like the actual leaf is is not the most perfect. It's one that the insects and, and critters have, have taken a few chomps out of. Oh. And I love the realism that you've created in that. Well, thank you. I find it more interesting when there are those missing pieces and the extra little details that are in it. And you've obviously um, really worked at the composition itself. You know, there's, there's this wonderful distortion of space and, and you have, you know, a, a real awareness of positive and negative spaces and the way that the forms uh, interact within the painting itself. Well, thank you, John. I like to look for those negative spaces and I like to have the contrast between the light and the dark and the soft and the hard edges. Well, it really comes across in this work, and, and I know that you have others in the show as well, and, and it seems that you, you draw from uh, elements of your own life, and you also draw from the inspiration of, of what's around you. I do. In fact, uh, one of the still lifes in the show was of a honeypot that I actually bought here at Eclectic Gallery, and I decided to include it in one of my paintings, the painting called uh, Honey and Lemons. Great. Well, thank you so much, Charlene. That's thank perfect. Thank you. I'm with Donna Ion, and Donna, you've um, been working this style for a few years now, and you've really developed it, and you've taken it further and further and further, and th there's an, a, a wonderful sense of abstraction with your work, and also a, a sense of um, how the light um, becomes pointillism. How, how yeah, it, yeah. Can you tell us about that style? Well, um, it, it's just something thing that I've developed you know, bit by bit. And uh, the pointillism is it's true. It, 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 it ref it's a re reflection of the light on the trees and the leaves and so on. Um, and I don't know where it came from. It's just something that I developed myself. Um, and I like the fact that it is abs abstract. You know you're looking at the forest, but it's not a realistic depiction of the, the forest. They're really. very abstract yeah. and yeah. you know there's enough of a reference there that you go oh yes I understand this mm -hmm. it's a forest mm -hmm. but when you actually break it down into into smaller quadrants um, you see these um, spheres and mm -hmm. movement of, of color so you've taken it into pure color and these swatches of color uh, create this mosaic that right, we, right. we, we yeah. interpret as the forest. Exactly. But it's also, you've created an, a sense of depth within that. The yeah. light takes you back further and further in the image. That's right. In fact, this particular painting, uh, when I first did it, um, I didn't like the fact that it seemed flat. So I put it back on the easel and put in these really light colors of white. And that seemed to, make, to, to give more depth to the painting. And then I darkened the foreground. Um, yeah, so it's 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 hard to explain, but the, uh, the result is lovely. <laughs> I think one other thing element that I notice is is your use of of contrasting colors, and there's just these few little red berries, but also there's a movement through the painting where you've uh, repeated that color, yeah, yeah. and and that uh, it seems like a very definite choice that you're making. Yeah, because I start with an underpainting, so I paint the whole canvas in these dark tree trunk colors, and I make sure that I do put some red tones in there, because I know at the end I'm going to be putting the red berries or dots. So I'd like to, you know, the, the, the painting has to, has to come together as a painting. 
Well, it gives you the eye uh, a focal point as well. Yeah. It, it gives you a place to start to enter the this imaginary scene that you've created. Great. Well, thank you so much, Donna. That's thank excellent. Thank you, John. <laughs> I'm with Jim McFarland, and we're looking at what I consider one of his masterworks. And Jim, you have done something with this painting that I haven't seen in your other work. You've been able to create a, an amazing abstract from something that started as being very real. Like you take us to a place, and is this on Harrison Lake? Yes, it's on Harrison Lake. It's, um, it's, a, it's a marina there, and um, actually, um, how is it? Harrison Hot Springs, so it's north, just north of there. Okay. And uh, I was there uh, in the springtime, or actually late uh, winter, and um, it really enjoyed the location. But try to capture that winter, the last light, light the winter, and uh, it is, I'd say, maybe impressionistic. Close it, to it, close. it has that sense of impressionism. There, there are a few elements in this painting that I find really uh, very attractive. And if we look at how you've created the mountains in this area with one tone, two tones, three tones, and then a combination of forest. You, you've simplified those forms, the mountain, yeah. into a tone of, of light and color. You, you have the swath of color and it moves yeah. through and takes you into the, you know, it could be the sky, it's the deep, yeah. deep, di you know, it's the distant horizon. Well, uh, hopefully it works, that's basically the intent, is to build shapes they don't necessarily have to be realistic marks, but that they give you the impression of mountains. You've done the same thing in this forest, where you have a sense of the tree, of the form, but then you come into these places here, and it it, it reminds me of camouflage gear. You know? <laughs> like, see, you've, you've created a camouflage forest, which is brilliant. And, and the same with your rock forms. Like, you've got the you know, the movement of the rock, the, the way that the... The, um, the massing of that rock appears, and yet it becomes pure abstraction. Yeah, um, yeah I think you're right. <laughs> and, and in this, um, this element of the sandbar, um, I, I, I find this the most intriguing part of your whole painting. And there's a sense in the, the gray of the, you know, I see that as a log. I see it as a place where I can rest, and I can sit there, and I can observe the, the entire scene. So it's like you've given the, the viewer an out. You've given them a place of, of, uh, of rest within your painting. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad it, it works. It does work. But, it, but and it's not an accident. It's a conscious thought process to try to create this, this space and this image that uh, hopefully people would enjoy. Well, I think that, you know, it's it's great to have the artist give us some uh, leading points, some ways of understanding their work, and, and thank you so much for doing that. It's a pleasure. One of the things I noticed about this painting, it was very difficult for us to hang because it's such a strong painting. It dominates the entire wall. It pulls in the energy of everything. And so I placed it front and center, and then I worked the other paintings around it so that um, they also have their place. But you've created a very powerful work in this image. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. And um, I think it, it works mainly because of the, the values and the contrast in the values create a, a light source and brings you into that space. Well, thank you very much, Jim. This is the camera. <laughs> this is the camera. <laughs> Uh, I'll just this say. is Peter Dogolenko, and then we're just um, interrupting the conversation that he's having with Susan McGilvery. So, can you uh, tell us what what your discussion was about? Well, I, I was talking about the um, the landscape and and getting something special out of a landscape because we we got so much landscape everywhere, and we drive by it, walk by it, and we see just glimpses of it. But when you stare at it for three or four hours, suddenly something starts coming out. You see colors, you see uh, shapes, you see all sorts of things. And you also get a feeling. And then suddenly when you have that feeling, you know, the urge comes to paint it. And how to convey that in a, in, a, in a painting, in a mood, and just bring it out. 
It could be very simple, like sand logs, which you've seen all the time, but how do I make it more than what it is? And it's like you were saying, that there's a spirit. There's a spiritual energy of nature in there. It's, it's vibrating and it's alive. It's, 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 it's the yeah. texture, it's all, it's all moving. I mean, you just get into that and it's just moving. It's so interesting that you, you mentioned that, Susan, because in the article that Boulevard did, I was talking um, to Robert Moyes and I talked, I, I actually, um, before we knew the show was coming together, we called it the, the spirit of nature. And I felt that from the images that I'd seen, that there, there is this, this feeling, this energy, this spirit within the scene. And I, I like the fact that you mentioned that, that a painter spends three or four hours gazing at this scene, and there's more than just what's on the surface. You really get into the, the depth of, of feeling of what that space represents. And, and in some cases, it's an ancient history. Well, it, it's that, and then the thing is, is that depending on where you are as an artist, you start applying a variety of techniques and uh, methods and testing them to see how you can bring it out. And this is where the agony and the ecstasy starts happening. Yes. You know, yes. you, you can, like, it's three hours maybe staring at, a, at the original landscape, but it's a ton of hours later on when you're painting it and repainting it and repainting it, just bring something out. And, and that's the part that, you know, when it happens, you suddenly stand back and say, I can't stop looking at this thing. It, it, it just grabs you, there's something there, and, it's, and it becomes a powerful painting, and, and you feel satisfaction as an artist. Well, and you have created some very powerful paintings here, and I, I'm, I hope you do feel a great deal of satisfaction because the viewer uh, who uh, can witness these paintings uh, is trans transported. You've taken them to another place, another sense of reality, and I think that's very profound in your work. So thank, thank you, you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you.